Hello, I'm Ewan. I'm the team lead for the Pan Coronavirus Gene Regulatory Network's uh, hackathon team, and these are my fellow team members. So the initial project outline was uh, I originally thought out this idea that um, because uh, SARS-CoV-2 was such a recent thing to emerge, the outbreak is quite recent. There's basically a lack of high throughput gene expression data available for it. But I was thinking due to its relatedness to SARS-CoV-1 and to an extent MERS, you could utilize the previously published uh, high throughput microarray data from these viruses. We set out to construct gene regulatory networks based on the um, differential expressed genes uh, or uh, co-expressed genes within these um, within time series. And so you'd idea is you'd construct a gene regulatory networks at each time point for the time series and then um, compare them between the viruses. And on top of that, so Habe, who joined a little bit later in, uh, he was going to develop an app that enables the users to input a set of genes, identify how they change during the course of infection and investigate in the context of the underlying gene regulatory networks. However, as with many things in science, things don't go quite according to plan. We effectively got stuck on identifying enough differential expressed genes to really do robust pathway or um, a gene regulatory network analysis across the time series because they went from about 0 to 96 hours in some cases. It's quite broad, quite varied. So instead, we um, ended up deciding to just simplify and perform differential expression analyses between 0 and 24 hours for the um, MERS data, micro data set and 4 and 24 hours the SARS-CoV-1 and 2 um, RNA-seq data sets that came out later on. Uh, yeah, so we performed differential expression between those, and we also did it for mock, for 0 and 24 hours for a mock. And then we removed from the um, data sets where there was the mock, the genes that were differentially expressed in that mock thing. So we ended up with just virus-specific samples. We then downloaded um, PPI interaction data from the Omnipath API and constructed networks based on these DE genes. We then perform a module cluster analysis on each network to identify um, communities of uh, genes and then perform ontology analyses on these. Now, this is what we got when we looked at the different viruses. So you got MERS, CoV-1 and CoV-2, go from left to right. And you see that for MERS, with the similar thresholds that we used, um, you end up with about 6,000 differentially expressed genes, which is quite a bit. And I think a lot of this is possibly due to just the high noise within microarrays, but also the data is quite old and a bit um, not the highest quality. Whereas for the um, the, the CoV-1 and CoV-2 differential expression, you see it's much more kind of similar pattern between them. And in fact, five of those 600 genes, roughly 600 genes are differentially expressed, about 500 of them are in common, which is quite interesting. There's quite a high correlation between the two. However, when you integrate it with the MERS and look at all the common genes between all of them, you only get about 80. And doing ontology analysis on these, those isn't so interesting because you don't really see anything um, beyond, you know, just basic MHC activity and immune responses, which you kind of expect from all viruses anyway. But we went on to construct the networks from these differential expressed genes and use a, using iGraph, which is an R package, and um, uh, identify modules via using the Louvain algorithm within the iGraph. And these were the networks we constructed. And what I want, went in to do is a focus on the CoV-2 stuff because it was most interested and performed um, clustering analysis on them. And then looked at the specific uh, clusters and performed ontology analyses on these. And what we saw was clusters 1, 2, 4, and 5, they were all basically just related to cell cycle and mitosis and just general cell proliferation, which is fairly generic and not that big a, big a deal when it comes to you know, understanding virus infection, because viruses do, by their nature, try and prevent an arrest of the cell cycle to, or sometimes modulate the cell cycle in order to prevent their own replication. However, module 7 was potentially interesting because it's associated with integrin binding, but I'm not too sure of the importance of that. And then again... Um, Cluster 8 was fairly general, sort of our gene expression, histone modification, and chromatin rearrangement um, genes. However, what was interesting was we then decided to compare the CoV-1 and CoV-2 genes to each other, uh, the modules, and we did something where we, you compute the Jacquard similarity interest between the modules, just how similar they are, and it actually came out that with using a specific threshold of 0 0.6, of, and similarity goes from 0 to 1, we ended up with um, three modules that are in common from the CoV-2 and the CoV-1. However, again, these are these quite unrelated generic things that aren't particularly interesting from the context of our um, uh, in viral infection. So moving on to the app that um, uh, Zahave developed. So the idea behind this is you can input your own um, genes into this data, into this uh, this platform, and it will tell you and show that how these genes change over the time course. So this is using the SARS-CoV-1 and 2 um, RNA-seq data. And the idea is it's, um, you can sort of get an idea of the gene trajectories and which genes are changed um, throughout time period. So we've got the, um, the mock, the CoV-1 COV and CoV-2 uh, uh, interfaces for the uh, app here. So finally, um, I think the next sort of stage we think about doing is perform centrality and hub analysis on the networks. We then potentially incorporate SARS-CoV-2 PPI interacting data that's just come out about a month ago to see if any of those genes are specifically targeted by CoV-2. 
And then also um, Zahave wants to integrate the network visualization into the app so you can understand the genes that are changing in the context of the underlying gene regulatory networks. I'd just like to um, uh, thank all my team members, uh, thank the RNA Society and the guys who organized the hackathon for letting us here. And I had a great time and I hope to get involved with more things like this. Cheers.